Hey everybody, Will here with Tom Cruise Studios, live music in Austin, bringing you another episode of Three Beers and Whiskey. This is episode number two featuring Sim Ross. Here's beer number two. Yeah, I like, uh, I really like Texas kind of troubadour songwriters. Obviously a lot of great guitar players. Mm -hmm. But I slow down this interview will be over in no time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like, you know, I like music, so it's hard for me to pin anything down. I like all of them. Yeah, it's all good. Anybody who's yeah. just like so committed to one kind of music or something is really missing out yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Oh, Jim, what about you, man? What, uh, what drove you to playing drums? Well, like like yourself, uh, my tastes are pretty diverse. I mean, if you, if you put my iPod on and hit shuffle, it may go from Megadeth to Stephen Bruton to yeah. Ravi Shankar to go. Buddy Rich. You know, I mean, it's, a, it's yeah, a, okay. quite a big array. But, you know, I started off, you know, born in the 70s, but, you know, did most of Somebody in Austin that you would like to play with and be part of, like, you know, when these guys play, I want, I want my band to be, I want to be part of that set also. I want to be playing with those guys. There's a couple of bands that I am, one of them I, uh, I live with the singer. He's mm -hmm. got a band called The Harvest Thieves that are great. Okay. Kind of Americana, Bob Dylan. Okay. Then there's another band that uh, their management company also manages called Western Youth. Another like up and coming Austin kind of Americana rock group. It's all that singer songwriter. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it's singer songwriters with a good band behind them. That's what I think. Yeah. So kind of kind of like you. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of like touch on the rock thing, they're they're a little bit more mellow than uh, stuff that I normally go for, but you know, like Jason Isbell type stuff. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, with this band incarnation, you guys doing kicking off in Dallas, do some shows, and see what develops from there. Um, anticipating putting out another album in a year? Or what's your goal on that? Uh, that has yet to be seen at this point. I would absolutely love to put out another album very soon. Um, once we start, once we get you know five to ten shows under our belt, I think we can then you know start working on new material. Okay. Yeah. Then I get the. I mean that's I'm excited to see you guys play here in Austin. I want to you know be able to go to one of those shows. You know, there's the more importantly is having right now is having a tight band that puts on a good show. But there's a band that's like super tight and they're having they're a having great time, time on stage yeah. and everybody gels and that bleeds out to the audience yeah. big time and then everybody is is having a great time and you know well then you sell merch and people yeah. ask about you want you to come back so. right. That's good stuff. So how long have you been prior to this? Because this is your first album, right? Second. second. Oh, that's your second album. First one is... Well, I didn't do my research, did I? <laughs> um, okay. First one is... is I, ha I had a band in New York, and I went back to Ohio and recorded an album over like a weekend, basically, just okay. by myself. Uh -huh. So I can... Were you playing this, everything yourself? or? It's, yeah, it's really just guitar basically just guitar. There's okay. a little bit of percussion, but that's, it's not much. Uh, so it's, I really consider this to be my, my real first record. But Nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's your pride and joy. Then there's your pride. So there's your, your firstborn. Yeah. There is um, one out there with some other songs that I, that we are starting to play now. This oh, well see, band. and that's even better is you've got right. some stuff that you're like, this is mine. And now you can rehash it with exactly. this incarnation and uh, move forward with that. So that's pretty badass. Yeah. Um, so how long? I mean, you know, you mentioned New York, you mentioned Ohio, and now uh, New six years, three years in New York, you said? Six I went years from Ohio York. to Chicago, Illinois, to <laughs> Brooklyn, New York, now here. So, okay. uh, as, a, as solo, as just Sim Ross, it's been, oh, I don't know, six, seven years at this point. Cool, okay. Um, I've been like the sole songwriter of the groups that I've been in for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. at least. So I eventually was just like, I don't feel like coming up with a name anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's like stable. So oh, so that's how you came up with a name for the band is just Sim Ross. Just like, yeah, okay. Is it Sim name. Ross and or it's just Sim as Ross. of right now, it is Sim Ross and the Laughing Heart. Is it okay? And I don't want did on your Facebook post because you just posted about the Dallas show. Did you say anything about that or no? About the Laughing Heart. I think he put something like that. Okay, I, that, I thought I saw something about Sim Ross and, and I was like, yeah. okay, cool. Because I keep saying Sim Ross and his band. 
when I when I met these guys, um, I guess with previous incarnations of the band, it was uh, Sin Ross and the Restless. That's okay. Yeah, that's my that's what I remember and seeing. When the okay. uh, flyer for the Kevin Galloway show when mm -hmm. it first came out, it said Sin Ross and the Restless. Mm -hmm. Well, since that flyer you know came out and we got together, uh, Sim texted me one night a couple weeks ago and said. What do you think about changing it from the restless to the laughing heart? And it's based on porn. Yeah, Charles, okay. Charles the, thank yes. you. I was going to say, all right, well, then, this, what's the story on the laughing heart? Uh, it's, I know I'm a huge Charles Bukowski fan. I flew through his books in my mid 20s, you know, in the, in the heart of my heavy drinking days. And, uh, just but you, hey, stuff. but you remember reading the book, so <laughs> right. I mean, there's a lasting impression somewhere Absolutely. in you from that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and you know, just one of those days searching for band names, as you know, one does in a band. My entire <laughs> career, <laughs> always looking for a band name. I came across that poem, and it's a, it's just a really cool poem. It's like touches on being hopeless, but it's also like hopeful at the same time. It's uh, life, life. Yeah. Very much so. It's actually really right. It's really right. It's a very good song. It's, so it's, it's, it's something I'm happy that everybody it. can uh, identify with. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very cool. This, uh, what drew me to Sim in the record is I mean, there's just nobody in this town doing that kind of music. And that's, you know, where Sim comes from and his background and all that. But it just sounds distinctively different. And, and you know, agree. Everybody, everybody out there agree? Agree? Yes. yes. Sim Ross really defies a, a, a genre or a pigeonhole. It was like, I was trying to describe like, well, it's, it's kind of like country with an added, and I was like, God dang, that doesn't work. And I was like, well, it's not punk. It's not okay, but honky tonk with like, oh shit, no. No, 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 there's, I, I there's, uh, no. no, 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 I mean, I can't think of anybody in Austin. I mean, I actually, my thoughts move more towards the, the, the kind of the punk music scene and, and there's yeah, nothing bad on, yeah. but right but it's like because of your voice yeah. you've got a hellified like voice that's very unique and distinct you hear it and you're like okay I know exactly who that is so that's you've got that going in your corner like a hundred thousand percent so um hundred thousand is a lot of percent that's a lot of percents yeah. yeah okay it's a thousand times more than all the percent <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, my balls busted over here. See, and this is what I like. I was like, hey, look, tune in and see what happens when you drink beer. <laughs> um, so, uh, question coming across, and I'll throw this back out to you guys coming this way is so we've got Sim Ross sitting in the middle who plays acoustic lead guitar and sings. Uh, rhythm guitar. Rhythm guitar. Mostly, most of the time electric. Okay. And, so, um, and then Sonny, who is lead guitar, and then Jimmy, who is the drummer. And then who we're missing tonight is Flash, I guess it's yeah. Flash, who's the bass player. Mm -hmm. Flash, Flash, sorry. Uh, at work or... Uh, yeah, cheer, cheers, Flash. Cheers. <laughs> okay. yeah, right. This one's for you, buddy. This one too. How are you loving life here in Austin and, and this happening to you? Is going, I mean, is it going what you expected or what you wanted? Uh, I mean, you can probably answer that honestly. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> what I expected. I, I stopped expecting things probably right when I, when I, right when I got here. Um, is, okay, wait. So did you stop because the Austin music scene is so brutal to music? I mean, why, why, where's, What's that? M many, many reasons. Uh, coming from New York, the mm -hmm. Austin scene is very nice. New York, people don't even, even if they're in the audience, they're not even watching. They're, they're, they're not even paying attention. So okay. I mean, people actually like, respond to music. It's more than so I it's, ask for. Yeah, so you're, you're loving the attention from music. having somebody in the crowd yeah, and watching that's the right. Yeah. So uh, that was unexpected. Uh, <laughs> having people care at all. Um, but when I came here, I, uh, the, the guy that I was playing, the drums on the record, I was playing in a band with in New York. He moved down a couple years before me. So I came, kind of came down here, not necessarily to play with him, but it was kind of like, well, 
it's somewhere to go. I have a, a musician friend that I can play with. Sure. And he's a great musician, plays with a bunch of people, so he's very busy. Uh, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't pay him. So he was to the point where he was playing regularly enough to, to get paid, which is what he wanted to do. Couldn't blame him for that. Wait, uh, you gotta, you're gonna have to tell us the secret because there's a lot of musicians in Austin. They're like, wait, wait, somebody's getting paid to play here in Austin. Tell us how to do yeah, it. I don't know how much he's getting paid. <laughs> More than zero. Yeah. So, uh, so I couldn't hang on to him, and uh, so, so recorded the record with him. Pretty much everything else is me. I mean, there's bits and pieces that are, there's like maybe eight musicians on it that did like a couple of lead guitar things. Mm -hmm. A little bit of bass from uh, a guy named Kiko that plays with uh, Stoney LaRue these days. Hell yeah, very good. Player. Yeah. Great bass player. In fact, I didn't realize how hard bass is. <laughs> which is like that. Yeah, which is a, like, a pre a pre pre going live joke about yeah. you know bass, so it's easy. No, it's really hard. It's so so hard. he was playing the simplest things and sounds so incredibly good. Yeah. Just his touch it made it sound incredible. So the, there are four songs he played on. If you listen hard, listen hard enough, you can tell. <laughs> but uh, basically, the rest is, is me and and uh, Brian. His name is Brian McGrath, the, the drummer. Okay. So I, I had Brian to. Is. Yeah. Yeah. He plays with a Aaron McDonald now, maybe. That's I think that's the guy. Well, well, he's of, played with a bunch of yeah, a bunch of other guys, and fills in. So you're just loving being like, as opposed to the New York unappreciated scene being in Austin. It's it's much more relaxed, and the music scene is cooler. Uh, I have the capability of going out and seeing an amazing band at least four nights a week. You know? I. If not, so. Exactly. If you want to. Thank you for watching Three Beers and Whiskey. Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification button. That way you don't miss future videos from Three Beers and a Whiskey.